Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna talk about something really cool, and that is this thing over here, which is the Lenovo Think Center M710Q Tiny. And this is one of our Project Tiny Mini Micro series systems. And these are all, if you don't know about Project Tiny Mini Micro, these are all these one liter corporate desktop PCs that you probably see in your office. And if you don't see in your office, or even if you do, you can sometimes find them coming decommissioned for very low prices. They're only about one liter and they're maybe you know a couple hundred dollars each, which makes them extremely inexpensive nodes. They're low power. And so they're absolutely great for applications such as running little servers and low power servers. You can run clustered nodes on them. You can do things like having a spare PC, a home theater PC. There are tons of different uses for such low power devices. So that's why we're going over a whole huge number of them so we can see what the differences are. Now we've mentioned this before, but Nick on the main site has a guide to setting these things up with Plex. He also has a guide in terms of turning one of these into a PFSense firewall appliance. Now, something that as we've been doing this series, a lot of our readers and some of you on YouTube have asked for is some kind of comparison between the units. And one of our form moderators, Mobile NVIDIA, actually started a guide in the forms that kind of goes over all of the different versions of these across generations. It's a super cool resource and it has the specs or link specs. It has the drivers, so links to drivers if you need those. It's super cool in the forms. And just to be frank, Mobile NVIDIA is one of the old STH guard. I mean, he was one of the people that when I started STH over 10 years ago, was one of the folks that encouraged me and really helped get the site started, I guess, in terms of his participation. So it's super cool that like a decade later, he's using these tiny mini micro following the series and come up with resources on that. I think that's super awesome. Now, Mobile NVIDIA was actually using these systems at work and at home. And then something really tragic happened. And that's also in this thread. Unfortunately, a wildfire went through his home in New Zealand and burn the thing to the ground. And so we actually have a picture of a Lenovo unit that's like a generation earlier than this one, but completely burned by wildfire, which totally stinks. Mobile NVIDIA, I'm not going to use your real name, but I just wanted to say from the STH community, I know you have insurance, but this is definitely a really sucky event. So we hope you guys recover and are on your way soon. Best wishes from the STH community. All right, so let's get back to the Lenovo Think Center. M710Q Tiny, and you might be wondering why we have these two units here. This is the HP Elite Desk 800 G3 Mini, which has the same processor that we have in this system. So they're kind of the same generation or same era of systems. Now in this video, we're gonna go over the Lenovo Think Center M710Q Tiny, and we're gonna go tear it apart, and we're gonna show you all inside how to service it, some of the options that you have and the features that are in it. But I also wanted to take the opportunity and compare it to one of its contemporary competitors. So that way, if you're browsing auctions and seeing listings for these things and you see these two, you have some way to compare and see which one you might want. We're going to talk about the performance and even the relative performance between these two. Now, in the Project Tiny Mini Micro series, I always like to have key lessons learned for folks because as we've gotten over two dozen of these systems, we've definitely learned a lot in the process. And there's some really good features, some not so good features, some features that have evolved over time and are different between lines. And so I just want to go over some of the key lessons learned with this system. All right, so let's get into it. On the front of the unit, we have a microphone jack and we also have a headset jack, which includes the microphone capability. So if you're a microphone aficionado, you have two ports on the front that you could potentially have a microphone attached to. Beyond that, there are two USB type A and they're 3.1 gen one, so they're five gigabit per second ports. Now this is a really good opportunity to look at the HP Elite Desk 800G3 here, because as you can see, this actually has a front, it actually has three USB ports, so there are two type A, but there's also a front USB type C port. Now you do get a lot of USB connectivity on these systems, but I just kind of like having the USB type C port if it's possible. And it is something I'm willing to pay a couple bucks more for. This is a pretty standard loadout for a Lenovo system. So it's just kind of what we would expect anyway. Now in the rear of the system, we have a standard power adapter for a Lenovo. And these take the same 65 watt power supplies that you'd see in say a Lenovo laptop. And so if you've seen this connector before, you know exactly what it is. And it's super easy to get extra power supplies down the line because there are absolutely tons of laptops and systems like these that use them. So these power supplies are very easy to get. Power, by the way, we got about 12 watts at idle and it's a 65 watt power supply. So it's only gonna pull so much power. We actually didn't get it all the way up to 65 watts. We only got it until like the mid fifties. So it's not necessarily something that you're gonna see get into that high level of power consumption unless you're really running some very heavy workloads and probably have some USB devices in there as well. The system really isn't made for super 
super heavy computation, but it is decently capable. Now, next what you're gonna see is two display port outputs, and that's very standard on these Lenovo Tiny systems. Now you can see that we have a third display port here, and you actually can see that there's another blank port. Now, what you can have on the back of these systems is up to two optional ports. You can have things like VGA ports, you can have HDMI ports, we have a display port here, you could have two blank slots, you could have a com like a serial port, and there's just a whole bunch of different options that Lenovo puts on these systems. This is definitely a feature that if you're purchasing or looking at a listing for one of these systems online, I will tell you that you need to go look at because you could be find something that's really cool or you could find something that you completely will never use. And we have a ton of systems with VGA connectors that we're looking at trying to figure out how to replace. Beyond that, we have four USB 3.1 Type A Gen 1 ports. So these are five gigabit per second ports. So we have a lot of USB three connectivity. Again, we don't have a type C port, but we do have a lot of USB ports. So that's good. In terms of networking, we have a Intel 219 NIC, which is pretty common in these systems. Some of the lower end ones have Realtek NIC. So this is actually kind of a little bit of a higher end option. We also see the Wi-Fi antenna. Now, something that's a little bit different between how Lenovo does their Wi-Fi antennas and how HP does their Wi-Fi antennas is that Lenovo tends to have these little detachable antennas. So you could go get a higher gain antenna if you wanted something like that for more range. But on the HP side, they have these little nubs and the little nubs are actually kind of nice because if you're stacking them, you don't have a floppy little antenna that's flooping around. Instead, you can just stack them really neatly because they have these little tiny, tiny antenna nubs. Also, something that is kind of important is the fact that HP, if you do see that little nub, it usually means that you have the wires already pre-wired for a Wi-Fi antenna versus Lenovo. If you don't see a antenna lead on the back, it does mean that if you do want to add Wi-Fi later, you're going to need to go find a solution to wire up that antenna lead as well. That's a really small detail, but it's just something to look for in these machines. So that way you don't get something and then have a lot of headache later. Now, opening the system, you still have a single screw. This is definitely not as nice as some of the HP options, but you do have a screw that you can pull out. The top of the system opens and you can see the CPU on top. Now we have an Intel Core i5-7500T. There are options in the system for both the sixth gen and seventh gen of Intel Core processors. We have a seventh gen system here. There are also sixth gen systems. I generally like to get, I think that the sixth gen is actually a great value, but there is a reason, and we're gonna talk about this in our key lessons learned on why you might wanna go get the seventh gen system just like we have here. Next, what you're gonna see below that is that there's a toolless hard drive system. And I absolutely love this system. This is a great system by Lenovo. So first off, to pull the tray out, you don't have to have any screws or anything like that, which you do have in the HP system. You just simply unclip this plastic carrier and then you can put a drive in there. There are little pegs. And so you don't need to find screws or any special rubber mounts or anything like that. You just have a really simple system. Now in this, this is a SATA port. And so you can put a hard drive, you could put a SSD, whatever you want in this. Something that I will say is that sometimes if you didn't get a 2.5 inch drive, you may not get this assembly. And this assembly isn't just this plastic connector. There's also a special little ribbon cable. That ribbon cable has both SATA data and also power that it delivers to the connector. So if you do buy a secondhand system and you wanna put a two and a half inch drive in here, that's something that you're gonna to wanna to find. Our system came with it, so we have it to show you. Now, when we pull that hard drive carry out, what we can find is a M2 Wi-Fi card or some systems don't have Wi-Fi so it is something to definitely check if you're buying these secondhand. Ours did, we have an Intel Wi-Fi solution. There are also Qualcomm Wi-Fi solutions that you can put in here. These are generally 802.11ac generation Wi-Fi cards and they also have Bluetooth, but these are not newer Wi-Fi 6 cards like we see in newer systems. Something really cool that Lenovo does on their tiny systems is that they have a little feature where you can actually pop the bottom cover off and that gives you toolless access to the bottom of the system. Now the bottom of the motherboard actually has some features that you are definitely going to want to know about. Now you're going to see two SODIMM slots and these are DDR4 SODIMM slots because we have Skylake and Cabby Lake in these systems. Our system for under $300 came with 16 gigs of memory, the Core i5-7500T and also a 256 gig NVMe SSD, which is actually a pretty good value. Frankly, with the Core i5-6500T or 7500T, I actually think that 16 gigs of memory is pretty reasonable. You may want to go up to 32 gigs. I think that going up to 64 gigs in this kind of system is something I just probably wouldn't do. I probably, if I were going to a 8500T or 9500T type of system where you have a little bit more cores because you have six cores, I think that's maybe where I would start looking at doing 64 gigs of memory. You can also see that there's an M.2 slot. And in that M.2 slot, we got a Western Digital 256 gig NVMe SSD. One thing that's really nice is that Lenovo doesn't use a screw mounting system. Instead, they have a toolless mounting system. Sometimes Sometimes if you've ever lost one of these little M.2 screws in the middle of one of these tiny chassis, it's a total pain in the butt to go get. So having this nice little toolless option is 
very welcome. I wish more vendors and every vendor did that. So in terms of key takeaways, let's start talking about processors first, because the Core i5-7500T is faster because you have a little bit more clock speed, but you still have four cores like you had in the Core i5-6500T. Frankly, I don't necessarily think that that extra couple hundred megahertz is going to be enough that I would say that you should go spend like $100 more for. I just don't think it's worth that much. It's worth maybe a couple dollars, but not necessarily something that most of our readers and most of the viewers on YouTube are even going to notice. Again, these are really meant for light computation, not necessarily like heavy grow max or something like that. Like trying to do molecular biology on these things. It's just, that's not what you're trying to do on these. They're just not designed for that kind of computation. If you have lower light work workloads, they're not very loud, but if you do load them up, they can actually become pretty audible. But there is a big difference between the Core i5-6500T and the Core i5-7500T, and that is the GPU. So if you're just building a server, you probably don't care about this. But if you are doing something like a Plex server or something like that, you are going to care that the Core i5-6500T had the Intel 530 graphics, whereas the 7500T has the 630 graphics. And what you get from that upgrade is things like on H.265, you get 10-bit versus 8-bit. You also get VP9 if you care about that. The one thing I would definitely caution anybody that's watching this to think about at least is the fact that if there is not a big premium between the 7500T model and the 8500T models in a kind of newer generation, then the 8500T is actually just a much better part because AMD Ryzen became more competitive in this era. And as a result, Intel decided to up their core count by 50%. You still get that Intel 630 graphics, but you get six cores instead of four. And by bumping the core count, you just get a lot more performance. Now, the other big one that I wanted to talk about here is that this particular system is a 700 series. So it's an M710Q. And what that means is it's not necessarily as high end as the M910Q would be. For example, this system uses the Intel B250 chipset. And what that means is we don't get the same high end management features that we could get in the higher end systems because this uses the Intel B250 chipset, which does not support vPro. And that's actually a great point of comparison because this HP Elite Desk actually is an 800 series, which is kind of more analogous to Lenovo's M900 line. And because of that, this supports vPro, where the Lenovo M710Q Tiny does not. And so even though the Core i5-7500T, if you're to go on Intel Arc, says that it supports vPro, it needs to be in a vPro compatible system. Now that gives you features like remote power on, power off. It also gives you the ability to do something like have a real VNC plus remote console. If you do care about vPro and that kind of manageability, you're probably going to want to go to a higher end system. Now, these two systems we actually got for about the same price. I think that the Lenovo system is more serviceable, and I actually really like the serviceability aspects of the Lenovo design. But frankly, I really also like the fact that the HP system gives me the vPro management. And given that we got basically the same configuration with Windows 10 Pro on both these systems, and the price was under $300, like just under $300, and they were within $5 of each other, I personally would probably get more of the HP units because I think that the higher end units are pretty nice, but I don't think either one was necessarily bad buy. It is something that you're going to want to look for. And you can see on the logos that the HP unit says that it has a Core i5 with vPro, while the Lenovo unit does not have vPro called out. When these systems are new, there is a premium given to the higher end models, but on the secondary market, often the only things that people look for are processor, RAM, storage, and then if it has Wi-Fi or not. Sometimes there's a little bit of a premium for the Windows 10 Pro license, but all the systems that we've been purchasing, or almost all of them have had that. And so it's actually unique when they don't. I would say that if you want the serviceability of the Lenovo system, but you also want the manageability, you should go look at the M910Q instead. Hey, I just want to also call out Stephen Foskett over at Tech Field Day, because he actually, I was talking to him for like probably like an hour and a half or something like that this week. And he was telling me like, oh, hey, I really like your tiny mini micro series. And I was telling him like, oh man, well, you know, it's really hard to go get these videos out because we have so much content. And then there's all these deals like the Xilinx and Marvell deals. I mean, it's just really hard to get these out. And he's like, oh, but I really like the content. So you should go get, you should go do another one. And so that's the reason that we're getting this video today. If you haven't, go check out the Tech Field Day and Steven stuff because he's a pretty cool guy. And hey, if you do like Project Tiny Mini Micro, well then why don't you click on subscribe, turn on those notifications because you've made it this far, so why the heck not? We also have the STH main site where we have a ton of new content and we have a really cool set of content for servers and some of these workstation bits that are coming out in the next couple of weeks. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.